Hi guys, I'm Georgia. And I'm Alex. And today we're going to discuss how cells restrict the lateral movement of membrane proteins. As you may know, membrane proteins are special in that they are integrated into phospholipid bilayers and cells. As a result, the movement of membrane proteins is intrinsically tied to the motion of the phospholipid bilayer. Now, phospholipid bilayers do not behave like static barriers, but more like fluids, and this is due to their unsaturated phospholipid hydrophobic tails. As you can see, it's the, in that middle diagram there. Thank you, Georgia. Um, so the reason that they're so fluid is due to these unsaturated tails. You can see that, that kink in the bond there. And there's also cholesterol, which is a stiffening agent, and that helps you know make the cells less fluid. But if this all this means that if these pro membrane proteins are not anchored to something, they're going to be unrestricted to lateral movement. So they're going to be able to move all throughout the cell. And this is illustrated perfectly here. Um, we have a hybrid cell, a hybrid between a mouse and a human cell. And you can see those proteins are, you know, at opposite poles um, at the beginning. But after 40 minutes elapse, then they move throughout the cell. And this is a perfect example of how membrane proteins move. So how do membrane proteins actually anchor down? To prevent this lateral movement, membrane proteins are restricted to a particular membrane domain, which is a specific area within the phospholipid bilayer. Thus, how can we restrict these proteins to a specific region in the membrane? So one way um, the, that movement is actually restricted is by tethering the protein to the cell cortex which is a specialized layer of cytoplasm in the interface of the membrane in animal cells. The cell cortex plays a key role in strengthening the plasma membrane, as you can see in the photo in the upper left corner, with a large difference of about 20 times greater in width and strength. Cell cortex is also responsible for cell shape control and is composed primarily of actin filaments and spectrum dyners. In the drawing on the bottom, the spectrum diner is shown in red, creating a meshwork to hold a specific shape. Without the restricted proteins holding this shape, disorder can occur in the organism. For example, sickle cell anemia is a result of misshapen red blood cells. Now, the protein could also be anchored to the extracellular matrix of the cell, which is made up of molecules such as collagen, or proteoglycan, and um, they help increase a cell structural integrity and restrict particular membrane components to one membrane domain. For example, in the image on the left, we see an epithelial cell lining the gut. It is crucial that the transport proteins are confined to the apical sur surface facing the gut in order to absorb the necessary nutrients. It is also it is possible for membrane proteins to be bound to proteins present in another cell, rendering the interacting proteins immobile. And finally, barriers can be formed that physically block the movement of membrane proteins. One such barrier is an intercellular junction known as a tight junction, in which special junctional proteins form a barrier with an adjacent epithelial cell that physically isolates a membrane protein to a particular domain. Thank you so much, Missy Larry. Yep. <laughs>